Man, I haven't made a video in a while. What should I make a video about? Maybe my five monitor gaming setup? Nah, that's too basic. How about my water-cooled gaming PC? Nah, I already talked about that. Ooh, what about my home lab and server setup? Actually, most people don't even know what a home lab is. Oh, I got it. What if I made a video on everything? Let's get into it. This is where I spend most of my time, whether I'm gaming, working, or just messing around with my home lab. My main desk setup is built for performance, efficiency, and just a little bit of RGB overload. Let's start with the gaming PC, the powerhouse of this setup. It's rocking an Intel Core i9-9900K, which has served me well, but it's definitely showing its age. A CPU and motherboard upgrade is on the list of future pans. The Gigabyte Aorus RTX 3080 Extreme Water Force 10 gig is fully water-cooled, keeping everything cool and quiet under load. But the system definitely needs a coolant flush and maintenance, so that's another project to add to my never-ending list. For memory, I've got 32 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RGB DDR4 3600MHz RAM, and for storage, I'm running a mix of NVMe SSDs and hard drives. Everything is housed inside of an Alien Lee O11 Dynamic XL case, which gives me plenty of space for any future upgrades. Now, let's talk about my laptop, which is just as important as my desktop. I use it for schoolwork, gaming, and on-the-go productivity. It's a Lenovo Legion Pro 7, packed with an AMD Ryzen 7945HX and a 4080, along with 32 gigs of RAM and a two terabyte SSD. This thing handles everything from SOLIDWORKS for engineering projects to networking tests for school. When I'm away from my main setup, this is my go-to device for getting things done and still being able to game at high settings. Now for the monitors. This is where things start getting ridiculous. I run a five monitor setup, each one serving a different purpose. The MSI Optics MAG 341CQ at the bottom, this is my main gaming and productivity display. A 34 inch ultra wide curved monitor at 3440 by 1440. The Samsung LC27J G52 in the middle is a 27 inch 1440p 144 hertz curved monitor, perfect for secondary tasks like Discord, content browsing, or watching videos. Then on the left and right, I have the Gigabyte G27QC, which are both 27 inch 1440p 165 hertz monitors, which are good for gaming, coding, and keeping an eye on system stats. And at the top, we have my Asus VA27EHE, which is a 1080p 75 hertz 27 inch monitor, which is just used for background apps, music control, and monitoring my server dashboard. This setup gives me a ton of screen real estate, making it perfect for multitasking, gaming, and productivity. Now, here's where things get a little bit more complex. My RTX 3080 and my gaming PC only has four display outputs, which means my laptop fills the slot at the bottom monitor. My Legion Pro 7 is connected to the MSI Ultrawide, allowing me to seamlessly switch between my desktop and laptop setup without having to constantly unplug and rearrange cables. Since I'm running two separate systems on one desk, I actually have two keyboards and two mice. For my main PC, I use the SteelSeries Apex Pro keyboard and a Rocket Cohen XP mouse. For my laptop, I have the SteelSeries Apex 7 keyboard and Corsair Knight Sword mouse which are connected directly to the laptop for better workflow. But ideally, if I want to use only one set, I use Mouse Without Borders, which is a program that lets me use one set of mice and keyboards to control both computers on the same network. To keep everything running smoothly and sounding great, I use the Beacon Mix Create Audio Mixer, which allows me to combine and control audio from both my PC and my laptop. This means I can seamlessly switch between gaming and schoolwork and entertainment without constantly adjusting settings. Underneath my laptop, I have a gaming laptop cooler, which helps keep temperatures down while I'm running SOLIDWORKS, networking simulations, or high performance games. For audio, I have a SumU Bluetooth computer speaker sitting on my desk. 
It's a 20 watt stereo speaker with Bluetooth and aux connectivity, and it even has RGB lighting that matches the rest of my setup. It's a great option when I don't feel like using my headset, whether I'm gaming, watching YouTube, or just listening to music in the background. Whether I'm gaming, working on projects, or running things on my server, everything is within reach, making it the ultimate all-in-one setup. The last time I made a video about building this server, it was just a simple PC with some hard drives thrown in running Windows 10. It worked, but not that well. After dealing with blue screen issues, random crashes, and performance bottlenecks, I, I finally made the switch to Proxmox. And honestly, I haven't looked back since. Now, let's move over to one of the most important parts of my setup, my home server and workbench. While my gaming PC is built for high performance, my server is the backbone of my entire digital life. It handles storage, media streaming, automation, home security, networking, and a ton of other services that keep everything running smoothly. I originally built this server as a simple file storage solution, but just like my gaming setup, it quickly spiraled into something much bigger. Now it's a fully virtualized home lab running multiple VMs, containers, and networking services, all managed through Proxmox. At the heart of my system is an AMD Ryzen 5 3600, which is a six core 12 thread processor that gives me plenty of power for virtualization. It's paired with an, MS an MSI B550 Gaming Gen 3 motherboard, which has good expandability and support for multiple PCIe devices. When I first set this up, I started with just 16 gigabytes of RAM, but as I added more virtual machines and services, that quickly became 32, and later I added another 64, bringing the grand total to 78 gigabytes of DDR4 memory. Since I run multiple virtual machines and Docker containers, having this much RAM is essential to keep everything running smoothly. Now, let's talk about storage, because that's where this build really shines. I have a mix of hard drives, SSDs, and NVMe drives all managed through TrueNAS scale with RAID configurations for redundancy and performance. The OS runs on a Samsung 512GB NVMe SSD, and I use a Silicon Power 256 SSD for caching and fast access storage. For bulk storage, I've got a combination of 4TB Seagate Iron Wolf and Western Digital Red NAS drives, 4TB desktop drives dedicated to Plex Media Storage, and multiple 2TB hard drives for backups and secondary storage. On top of that, I have external USB drives including a 1TB WD Elements and a 2TB WD Portable Drive, which I use for additional backups and off-site storage. Fitting this many drives into a standard case was a challenge, so I ended up having to 3D print some custom hard drive mounts to maximize storage space while keeping everything properly cooled. This setup allows me to expand as needed without having to invest into a rack-mounted system at least for now. Since my server runs a lot of important services, I have a dedicated system for monitoring its status. That's where my Asus VivaBook comes into play. It runs Ubuntu and it's used for system monitoring, email alerts, and general network health tracking. Both my Proxmox server and my laptop is plugged into this HP Pro display, which is a 24 inch 1080p monitor. This setup allows me to switch between monitoring my virtual machines, running diagnostics, and checking email alerts without needing to remote into the server. I also use a KVM switch to swap between multiple systems and a Logitech K400 wireless keyboard to control everything from one place. Next to my server, I also have my Elegoo Neptune 4 Max, which is a 3D printer, which plays a huge role in my setup. I use it for printing custom hard drive mounts, brackets, and organizational tools for my home lab. It's also great for experimenting with new prints and making custom parts for various projects. This setup has come a long way from just a Windows 10 PC with some hard drives in it. Now it's the central hub for everything I do on my home network. From media streaming and automation, network security, and storage management. I'll be making a dedicated video breaking down all the technical details from my storage pools to virtual machines, so stay tuned for that. But for now, just know that this system keeps my entire setup running smoothly, making everything more connected. 
automated and efficient. Let's move on to my girlfriend's setup, which is an absolute clean and aesthetic workstation built for gaming, work and entertainment. While my setup is all about overkill home labs and five monitors, hers is much more balanced. It's functional, powerful, and has a still plenty of RGB. At the heart of her system is an AMD Ryzen 7 3700X, an eight core 16 thread processor that still holds up really well for gaming and productivity. It's cooled by a Corsair IQ H100i Elite liquid cooler, keeping temperatures low while adding some RGB flair inside of the case. Paired with an Asus ROG Strix B450F Gaming 2 motherboard, it offers some great connectivity, expandability, and overall stability. For memory, she's rocking about 16 gigs of DDR4 3600 RAM, which is more than enough for her daily tasks and gaming. Storage wise, she has a 250 gig Samsung 860 Evo for her operating system and a two terabyte Seagate Barracuda hard drive for storing games and her files. Now let's talk about the GPU. Her build is powered by an Asus ROG Strix RX 6600 XT, which delivers great performance at 1080p and ultra wide resolutions. Whether she's gaming or just multitasking, this GPU keeps things running smooth. Everything is housed inside of a Lee and Lee Landcool 2 mid tower case, which looks sleek and has plenty of airflow. To keep things cool and stylish, her build has a mix of Corsair LL120s and QL120s. So yes, there's plenty of RGB going on here. Moving on to her display setup, she has a 34 inch LG 34W key WQ650 ultra wide monitor as her primary display, which runs at 2560 by 1080 at 100 Hertz. This is perfect for her immersive gaming experience and multitasking. For secondary tasks like Discord or streaming, she uses a 27 inch LD LG 27 MN 60 TW monitor at 1080p and 75 Hertz. Together, they make a really clean and efficient dual monitor setup. Her peripherals are just as refined. She uses a flow light, low profile mechanical keyboard, which is wireless, swappable, and extremely sleek. For her mouse, she sticks with the Logitech G102, which is a simple, reliable, and responsive. Audio is handled by a Logitech G733 wireless headset, and when she's not using that, she uses the Logitech Z313 2.1 speaker setup for music and general audio. Like my setup, she also has some custom touches to match her aesthetic. Her desk is an IKEA Slaljon countertop supported by some ever-built heavy-duty brackets, making for a sturdy workspace. The lighting includes Govi Glide RGBIC smart wall lights, which are fully customizable and sync with the music, creating a really cool and ambient effect. And for content creation, she has a refined audio mixer, which allows for finding tuning her mic input and mix audio mixing for streaming or recording. Overall, her setup is a perfect mix of performance, aesthetics, and functionality. It's great for gaming, everyday use, and content creation, while maintaining a clean and minimalistic look. It's also way more reasonable than my 5 monitor madness, but hey, we all have our thing. Let's move on to my network backbone of my setup, the network cabinet. This is where everything comes together, making sure my devices stay connected, my home lab runs efficiently, and my network is optimized for both speed and security. Unlike a standard home setup with just a basic router and a few Wi-Fi devices, I've built a fully fledged network infrastructure that can handle my servers, security cameras, smart home devices, and multiple workstations without breaking a sweat. At the core of my network is my Dell Optiplex 390 running OpenSense. This machine is my main router and firewall, handling all of my network traffic, VLANs, and security rules. It's running on an Intel Core i5-2400 with 8 gigs of RAM and 250 gig SSD, making it more than capable for routing and firewall duties. To handle high-speed connectivity, I have added an Intel X540 T2 dual-port 10 gig NIC, which helps with fast data transfers and future-proofing my network. Connected to my router is a D-Link DGS 1210 48-port managed switch that acts as the core of my network. This is where all of my wired devices connect, from my gaming PC and servers to my smart home hub and entertainment systems. 
Everything is neatly patched through a 24 port patch panel, keeping things organized and easy to manage. For my power over Ethernet devices, like my security cameras and access points, I use a Cisco SF302 8 port PoE switch. This provides power and data to my PoE enabled devices without the need for extra power adapters, keeping everything nice, clean and efficient. Next, I have my Seagate 2-bay NAS, which is mainly used for network storage and backup purposes. While my main storage is on my home server, this NAS is great for quick file sharing and redundancy, ensuring that important data is always backed up. My Binaradat 4 port 2.5 gig switch with two 10 gig SFP ports helps offload high speed traffic, boosting performance for servers and high bandwidth workstations. This setup provides a fast and reliable and secure network for gaming, streaming, and my home lab, ensuring low latency, high bandwidth, and maximum uptime. It's not your typical home network, but it's built to handle everything I throw at it, with room to grow. Now that we've gone through my entire setup from my gaming battle station to my server rack and network infrastructure, let's talk about future upgrades. Because let's be real, no setup is ever truly finished. There's always something to improve, optimize, or just tinker with. Starting with my gaming PC, one of the biggest things I want to upgrade is my CPU and motherboard. My Intel 9900K has been a beast, but it's definitely starting to show its age, especially with newer workloads and games pushing higher core counts and better efficiency. I'd like to upgrade to something more modern, possibly an AMD Ryzen 7000 series or an Intel 14th gen CPU, along with a motherboard that supports PCIe Gen 5 and DDR5 memory for better future proofing. On top of that, I plan to also switch to an AIO liquid cooler to help with thermals and reduce some of the maintenance involved in my current loop. For my home server, the main thing I want to upgrade is storage capacity. While my current RAID setup works great, I'm starting to push the limits of my available space, especially with media storage and backups. My goal is to start swapping out smaller drives for larger capacity ones, ideally 10 terabytes or higher, to ensure that I have plenty of room for future growth. I also want to upgrade to 10 gig networking between my server and my main PC, making file transfers and virtualization much smoother. Moving on to my girlfriend's PC, the biggest upgrade on the list is a better GPU. While the RX 6600 XT still performs well, I'd like to get her something more powerful. Maybe an RTX 4070 or a 7800 XT so she can game at higher frame rates and make better use of her ultra wide monitor. And finally, for networking, I want to expand my 10 gigabit network to more devices, not just my server. Right now, my network is mostly 1 gig with a few high speed links, but I'd like to upgrade my core switches to handle 10 gig connections across my main systems. At the same time, I also need to upgrade my PoE switch to a full 1 gigabit model so that my cameras, access points, and other PoE devices get the bandwidth that they need. So yeah, there's always something to improve, and this setup is constantly evolving. But that's part of the fun, building, upgrading, and optimizing until everything runs exactly how I want it. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the setup tour, let me know what upgrades you'd like to see next. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for future updates. And I'll see you in the next one.